recent election as the new LCU Plan uh, Board President. Thank you. So happy to have you. It's exciting. Are, are you open to talking a little bit about the work of the fund and maybe our history and the evolution of, of how we, where we began and where we are now? Sure, sure. Excellent. Okay, good. I have some questions for you. <clears throat> Uh, when the LCU Fund for Women's Education was founded in 1858 as the Ladies' Christian Union, its mission uh, back then was to provide safe, affordable housing in Manhattan for young single women. Why was this important then? Uh, the founders saw and responded to a real pressing need. Industrial and commercial growth had opened new doors for women to seek employment in urban areas. They could leave those family farms and domestic servitude that they had been trapped into and pursue independent, self-supporting lives in cities like New York. But they needed a safe, affordable place to live. A whole lot different than today. By the mid-20th century, LCU had acquired six brownstones in Manhattan that were safely sheltering these eager newcomers and their ambitious dreams for success. So fast forward to the year 2000 when the LCU uh, Fund saw another yet continuing opportunity to respond to the housing needs of women in New York City. What was that all about? Okay, in the intervening decades, the foundation faced reoccurring financial challenges in trying to maintain these properties. I bet. So they also confronted changes in societal mores. Consider this, you have a brownstone in which there is a 24-hour matron stationed at the entrance. Mm -hmm. You have public uh, areas and communal dining room on the street level, and then from the second floor on up are the bedrooms and shared baths for the women residents. Male visitors were restricted to the common public areas. It's now 1960s. And these physical arrangements and rules are no longer acceptable. Yes, women wanted more personal privacy. They wanted greater freedom to come and go as they pleased, as well as the right to entertain whomever they chose in their own space. They wanted to order their lives as they saw fit. Responding to these societal shifts, while keeping in mind the final founding principle, the board sold the last of these properties in 2000 and invested the proceeds with the intent that the investment earnings would help pay for the rent of a select group of women. This endowment continues today, and it is the nucleus for the fund's current grant making. Each year, the LCU Fund helps about 150 scholars via our educational partners, and on an average, nearly half of their monthly rent is covered by LCU grants. So that's a significant contribution. Sure so, is. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the profile of the LCU scholar. I can imagine that our viewers are interested in knowing a little bit more about who she is, uh, where she comes from, what she studied, where she studied, what her goals and aspirations might be. I'd be happy to do that, but I want to remind you all that tonight you will be able to meet some of these scholars during the broadcast. And if you stay on, join us for our meet and greet post-broadcast. You'll actually have an opportunity to speak with a scholar or two. So I hope you stay with us. Still, Sarah, to your question, first and foremost, LCU scholars are women who reflect the rich diversity of New York City. In age, cultural background, ethnicity, race, religion, national origin, sexual identity, and physical abilities. It's the whole gamut. Our research, though, tells a little bit more about our students. A majority are older. They're 26 years plus. Many are first-generation college students. All have a household of $30,000 or less. Which is tough in New York City. Many work two, maybe even three part-time jobs just to put together monthly living costs. Some are single parents, others actually have caregiving responsibilities for extended family. However, all are determined, resilient, committed 
to making a better life for themselves and for their communities. So the board's decision to shift from providing physical housing to helping low-income college students pay the rent was over 20 years ago at this point. Do you think that's, that's still a need? Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course. Things have evolved. Initially, LCU grant making emphasized helping lower income women get into college. More recently, our focus has shifted somewhat and we are actually focusing on their finishing their degrees and graduating. So really college completion is the focus. College completion. It's a critical directional nuance, but it's very, very important, especially if you consider the high drop dropout rates for low income students during their junior and senior years. Happily, the LCU housing grant provides a way forward for these women who may be on that brink. Is that financial lifeline for your sex? Without a doubt, COVID has impacted all of us. Uh, yet, as the world attempts to emerge from months of lockdown, we know that uh, the effects have been disproportionately felt by uh, low-income families and individuals, and that includes uh, LCU scholars. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how the board has been thinking about these issues and organizationally, uh, how they may be addressed? We have been thinking about them and we have been addressing them, but we also remain wholeheartedly committed to our primary mission of providing NYC housing relief to female college students pursuing careers in socially responsible professions. Moreover, there's the reality that the LCU endowment is tied to the performance of the financial markets, and so there can be fluctuations there that affect our decision making. Still, we evolve and respond thoughtfully and energetically to new opportunities and challenges. COVID is a perfect example. Uh, from the onset of that pandemic, we've given nearly $170,000 in emergency rent relief to 240 scholars to help them complete degrees that they were working on. On top of that, our 2020-2021 grant making totals, two years. two years together, have amounted to nearly $2 million. We understand that there are other persistent needs, food insecurity, transportation costs, even post-graduation expenses related to launching their careers, licensing costs, perhaps additional training. Um, and that, okay. There's those enormous debts that they're going to face in completing college. But we don't want to ever take away from that primary goal to enable LCU scholars to complete their degree by reducing the burden of their housing costs and therefore giving them that additional space they need to be able to focus on their studies and graduate. Right. So not only is it the physical space, but it's the emotional space as well to focus and, and do what they need to do in order to get that really important, critical degree. Yes. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for being so thoughtful about describing the work of the LCU Fund and you know, our history and the evolution of, of how we position ourselves to today. Um, I want to thank you all for tuning in, and it's now my great uh, pleasure to introduce you to some of our amazing scholars and alumni. We certainly hope that you enjoy. Thank you.